JP here and check out this 4.6 liter two valve V8 engine out of a new edge Ford Mustang that I scored for just $300. So as you probably could see in the background of the other frame, I am building another 4.6 liter V8 engine for my Mustang. And I bought this engine basically to cannibalize because it had a few parts I needed. And upon first glance, of the exterior of the engine, I think I did pretty well because I scored a set of shorty headers, a PI intake, have PI heads. It has the slightly more desirable eight bolt crankshaft. This engine is definitely slightly tired as you can see from all of the carbon deposits on the outside. It's definitely been apart as you can see from bolts being missing. It also seems like the crank was pulled off and then slapped back on, the intake plenum is chipped. So that's just scrap metal. So the story with this engine from the previous owner is that he relapped all the valves, did the head gaskets, and found out that it needed piston rings because there was low compression in one of the cylinders. So he told me that if I put piston rings in the engine, and also timing chain components, it would run. We're gonna dig into this thing and see how true that really is. I'm gonna start by taking this intake plenum off. Just four eight millimeter bolts. And this thing, ooh, there's some dust in there. Scrap metal. This intake's gonna be our next thing to take off and there are a couple of 10 millimeter bolts. Some of them are missing. Some of them are here. So. Next, we'll take the water pump off. Sometimes these pulleys are completely corroded onto the water pump. Oh, look at that. And, well, this thing's definitely been apart because that just fell off. Water pump on this Windsor in. Oh, look at how loose that was. Yeah, so. I'm just going to use this hammer. It's not going to hurt the block because the pump's aluminum. Next up is the harmonic balancer, which is an 18 millimeter bolt. This thread's like a little messed up. Let's see if this thing just pulls off. Nah. No damage done. I'm a little concerned about the shape of my crank threads because it appears that they may be damaged. Hmm. Actually, I guess it holds okay. Next, let's see what's under these valve covers. After looking at this head a little bit, seems like there's some fouling. They either used conventional oil or synthetic blend oil and then did not change their oil as much as they probably should have. But regardless, they look okay. I'm gonna take the timing cover off. Does anything particular jump out at you guys? Oh yeah, there is no oil pump. Also, um, I noticed, yeah, there's some fouling. It's uh, definitely not the best I've seen. Also, I noticed that it has the earlier style cast iron tensioners, which are actually an upgrade over the modern plastic tensioners that would have come on this engine stock, I believe which is what you want. You want these ones. Plastic tensioners are known to fail on these. Next, it's time to take these heads off. Oops. <laughs> 
Head gasket down. Not in bad condition. Same with the right bank header. Looks pretty good. It's funny, I didn't notice this. They just had bolts, so... Like, not even the proper studs. Need to get some of these with the wrench. These headers actually look pretty nice. I am impressed by the no-name Chinese header quality, to be honest. Look at the fitment of this pipe, of this piece of tube coming out of the flange. They had to cut, the previous owner cut the stud to clear the pipe. That's how close it is. Like, you can't even, you can barely even get the wrench on there. This is the only way you can take this bolt off. That explains why it's so loose. Can't even fit a, look at that. Doesn't even come out of there. Impressive. <laughs> EGR intact. And I'm pretty impressed by these headers. Besides the bolt clearance issues. I cannot believe that. Unreal. Time to yank the oil pan. Looks like they dropped the engine on the oil pan like I did when I was taking it out of my car the first time. Disgusting old oil pan gasket right in the trash. Guess the kid wasn't lying when he said he changed the head gasket. These look pretty new. Too bad you can't reuse head gaskets. I'm remove this oil pickup tube. Time to loosen all of these rod bolts. <laughs> and I know these have not been untorqued before because they are torqued to spec. The rod bearings are not in bad condition. Look at that. Wow. I was not expecting that. Well, we know where the problem is. Now I'm just going to take the rest of these out. Looks like there might have been some metal that found its way into this crankshaft bearing because it's scored pretty significantly in the middle. I'm gonna take the crank out. After taking a look at this crank, it's actually in pretty good condition. Some minor wear at the bearing locations, but nothing that can't be polished. We're down to the bare block. So, that was the piston that was causing the cylinder to lose compression. I guess the kid was telling me the truth, even though he thought it was piston rings, when really it was due a piston. The rest of these rods and pistons are in relatively good condition and could definitely be used if you were intending on building a stock engine.
And I was surprised at the cylinder with the damaged piston. All there really was was some excessive scuffing, as you can see there. But, I mean, as you can see, they all look pretty decent. See the bottom ones, and they all, you know, have that nice shiny mirror finish. I have some cleaning up to do. But thank you guys for watching. And let me know if you guys think I got my $300 out of this engine.